Hi friends, welcome back to Edupedia World. Last lecture we focused on the prism and uh, behavior of refraction on a prism. Today we will see some application of refraction in real life. We will see what real and apparent depth is and how the apparent depth is influenced by refraction. As a result of a variation in real depth from apparent depth, there is something known as shift. We will discuss that. And finally, we will close the chapter with a numerical to understand the real and apparent depth better. Let's see. Let us start seeing some of the real applications of refraction. We will begin by understanding the concept of real and apparent depth. To understand this, uh, we need to understand the context of it. When you are looking at an object, which is placed at a denser medium from a rarer medium the object will appear to be at a lesser depth than it is actually for example in this diagram this uh, is a medium which is denser than the air medium here and we are observing from the air so basically this is denser this is rarer and an object is kept at point O Okay, but what we will see is that uh, the image of the object is formed at point I. Now, why is it so? Let us uh, see a ray diagram. The object O we are observing from here. So, the ray goes like this, straight line in the medium. But since it is traveling from a denser to a rarer medium, it will bend away from the normal. So, it bends away and goes... Uh, translates this direction. Now to form the image the ray needs to be traced back along this line which comes along this line and ultimately it meets here at the normal line. So the image is formed here whereas the object actually is present at O. As a result what is happening? The real depth is this. The real depth is this but what we are seeing as the apparent depth is this. Therefore, on observing from a den rarer to a denser medium, the object appears to be closer. Now let us see the calculations behind this. Okay? Let us call this as mu1 and this as mu2, the refractive index of the two mediums. We know that mu1 will be greater than mu2. Why? Because this is the denser medium. 1 is the denser medium. Now let us apply Schnell's law. When we apply Schnell's law, applying Schnell's law, what we'll see is this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction so mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r the basic Snell's law now let us find out what sin i is since this is i this is also i alternative angle and sin is opposite side by hypotenuse. So this will be this AB upon OB. Therefore mu1 times AB upon OB and uh, mu2 times sin R. Now this is R. Right. Therefore this whole angle will be R and this being the alternating angle will also be equal to R. Therefore, sin R will be this opposite side that is AB upon IB. Right? So, we can write sin R is equal to AB upon IB. Upon a little manipulation, what we can see is AB, AB cancels out. And uh, we really want to find the relation between the real depth and the apparent depth. Let us explain 
it in terms of IB and AB uh, rather IB and OB so we can see that IB upon OB is equal to mu2 upon mu1 and this both are with reference to vacuum so the refractive index mutual refractive index can be written as mu2 1 right but uh, what have we got now we have got IB that is this length and OB this length but what we really need is the relation between AI and AO. Now if uh, we see this point B and A, in reality the point B and A are very very close. We are seeing more or less directly above but just a bit moved from A. Therefore we can approximate IB as IA and OB as OA. Why is this? I repeat it again. This is because A and B are very close. So let me write it down. IB is approximately equal to IA and OB is approximately equal to OA. Now we will be replacing these values here. IB can be written as IA, OB can be written as OA. And this is the refractive index of air with respect to the medium. Okay. Now, IA is the apparent depth, right? This is not the real depth. This is the apparent depth. Therefore, we can write the apparent depth is the refractive index of air with respect to the medium multiplied by the real depth. Now since the refractive index of air with respect to medium will be less than 1, the apparent depth will become less than the real depth. Therefore we see that when we are observing a body from a rarer medium and the object is placed in the denser medium, then the apparent depth will be less than the real depth since this is this is less than 1 so this apparent depth is less than real depth okay so this is the relation which we get between apparent depth and real depth now an extension of this will be what is the shift what is the shift in the image and the real position that is what is this distance so what will be the shift? Shift will be real depth subtract apparent depth from it and that uh, we can express as apparent depth can be replaced with this whole thing so it comes here and we can write it as real depth and multiply it with 1 minus refractive index of air with respect to the medium or if we like we can replace this with depth real depth 1 minus 1 upon mu 1 2 that is refractive index of the medium with respect to air. It does not matter because this and this, the reciprocal of refractive index of air with respect to medium and refractive index of the medium with respect to air are same. So we can express it in either way. And therefore we see that the phenomena of refraction leads to a different observed depth than the real depth. Let us now see a uh, example image which will uh, let you see this actually happening. This image shows uh, a pencil which is dipped in water and we are seeing from the medium air. So we are seeing from a rarer medium into something which is in denser medium, right? 
so ideally the pencil is a straight object so it should have been the image of the pencil should have appeared something like this it should have gone straight like this but what we are seeing here interestingly is that the pencil is getting bent here now why is it that this is because since we are observing a pencil which is in the denser medium the apparent depth of the pencil uh, is reduced than its real depth therefore it seems to have moved upwards right it should have ideally been here but the image is shifted upwards since it is in a denser medium and as a result the pencil appears to be bent in the water so this is one real life scenario where we can see practically the refraction taking place this happens in a lot of more scenarios uh, you might have observed that if you throw a coin inside a bucket of water the coin actually appears to be closer than what you feel the distance once you put your hand inside to pick up the coin so these all are different variations of the same problem right so now with this understanding let us see a numerical on the bending of the object due to the apparent depth in form of a numerical the question which we have at hand states that a river appears to be three meter deep it appears therefore this is the apparent depth apparent depth is equal to three meter now it appears to be three meter deep and the refractive index of water with respect to air is 4 upon 3. Refractive index I am denoting it by mu of uh, water with respect to air is 4 upon 3. We are supposed to find the real depth of the river. Real depth is supposed to be found. Now we just saw a while back that the apparent depth apparent depth dpth apparent depth is real depth times the refractive index of the air with respect to the denser medium right so for the apparent depth we will have to have the refractive index of the rarer medium with respect to the denser medium therefore what we can say is for the real depth we can take the reciprocal we can take this as the denominator and take it reciprocal and multiply with the apparent depth so that would be real depth is apparent depth multiplied by the refractive index of water with respect to air okay let's take this as the convention of water with respect to air now we have the refractive index of water with respect to air as 4 upon 3 we know the apparent depth as 3 meter so we can replace it 3 meter into multiply by 4 upon 3 that is 4 meter so we find that the real depth of the river is actually 4 meter which is 1 meter more than what we, we are able to observe. Now a quick way to check whether the calculation is correct or not is that the real depth should be more than the apparent depth because the apparent depth basically the object appears closer than what it really is. So here the real depth is 4 meter which is more than the apparent depth 3 meter. Therefore we can roughly estimate that our calculation is in the right path. Okay, so with this simple example and the theory which we studied today we saw a practical example of uh, a refraction taking place and how it affects 
the real physical phenomena. Next lecture, we'll see what critical angle and total internal reflection is.